Imagine you had the power to make all the decisions in your country. What would you do? Would you provide everyone with everything they needed? Or just the few people you know? Maybe you'd reward the people you liked and punish the people you didn't like. You might think this is a great idea, but what if you weren't the one with the power? What if you were put in prison just because the person in power didn't like something about you? If one person or group holds all the power, they can't be stopped from abusing it. The Constitution recognizes that governments have enormous power and that historically, governments have been the main violators of human rights. To prevent these abuses, South Africa's constitution, like the constitutions of many other countries, divides power between three different government branches. Each of these branches of government has different powers, and each branch checks and balances the others. The first of these branches is the legislature, also known as parliament, which is responsible for making new laws and changing existing laws. The second is the executive, which is responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the country, as well as putting new laws into effect and enforcing existing laws like access to basic health care and education. It's headed by the presidency and run through departments like labor, health and education by the cabinet ministers the president appoints. The third is the judiciary, which is responsible for interpreting and ensuring that all arms of government comply with the laws especially the Constitution, which is the supreme law. It's made up of all the courts and judges in the country. The Constitution lists in detail the powers that these three arms of government possess and tells us the functions that they should fulfill. The branches of government check each other's power and make sure that power is balanced and isn't abused. If one of them tries to do something that the Constitution doesn't say it can do, then they would be overstepping their power and violating the Constitution. For example, if the legislature passes a law that discriminates against people of color, and this was challenged in court, the court would be doing its job by saying that the law was unconstitutional. When a court declares a law unconstitutional, it isn't interfering with parliament. It is making sure that parliament does its job properly. Political analyst Dr. Sitembi Lembete tells us about a recent case in the Constitutional Court that demonstrated the importance of the separation of powers. Previously, under apartheid, we did not have a separation between the three arms of government, which is why you saw so much unfair law come out of the South African parliament and be imposed on people, on the citizens of the country, and how apartheid could actually thrive for so long. The people that wrote our constitution, seeing that we came from this very oppressive past and a past of parliamentary supremacy, sort of looked around and they said, what would be the best way for us to make sure that all the evils that were done under apartheid do not happen in future. So they looked at different systems across countries in the world and they decided that the system that would best enable that in South Africa is a system of separation of powers. Along with this separation of power, our constitution also created constitutional organizations like the Public Protector and the South African Human Rights Commission to help prevent government abuse. Civil society, organizations consisting of normal South Africans like each of us, also plays a vital role in holding the government to account. 